welcome to a brand new episode of Coming Distractions brought to you by the Nerdpocalypse Podcast. I'm your host, Jay. Okay, guys, let's talk about the 2018 uh, Steve McQueen film, Widows. So this is Steve McQueen's fourth movie. Uh, if you're unaware, he did Hunger with Michael Fassbender and then Shame uh, with Michael Fassbender as well. Both great films. And then he did 12 Years a Slave with uh, Chiwetel Ejiofor, which won him uh, Best Picture which was also excellent, obviously. And now uh, we're getting uh, Widows. Now, the thing is, Steve McQueen's films, I would argue, are not necessarily the most easily digestible films because they are very, they feel very indie. They're not big commercial films. It's basically um, the, the difference between him and a lot of sort of mainstream directors. That being said, I think Steve McQueen is easily one of the best directors going right now. And one of the best black directors that we've ever had, um, at least in the modern day. So in Seeing Widows, I was pretty excited about it. It's got a great cast. Viola Davis, um, Colin Farrell, Liam Neeson doing a movie that's not just an old man, like being a badass, thankfully. Um, it, it's It's got um, Michelle Rodriguez. You know, there, there's, a, there's a good amount of people here who... Are you know real standout actors uh, Elizabeth Debicki, um, Cynthia Revo, who I think is very good, uh, Brian Tyree Henry from Atlanta, you would know him, and of course uh, Daniel Kaluuya from Get Out. So the cast is pretty well stacked with some pretty um, pretty great names, pretty big names. The thing is with this movie, I really really enjoyed it. Um, just. You know, not to beat around the bush, but the thing that I found is this was a very weirdly commercial film for um, for the director. It felt like, and I don't have proof of this, I'm not saying this is exactly what happened, but this is what it felt like, that the studio came to him and said, okay, we like your movies, we love 12 Years a Slave, we like Shame and Hunger, they were all great movies. Now, if you could do a movie that's really going to resonate with the vast majority of audiences, that we don't have to struggle to get people to go and everything else, um, we'd really like you to do something that's just kind of going to hit right down the alley and get people to the theater. Um, and that's what this is. This is, as far as a Steve McQueen film, I don't think this is a very good Steve McQueen film, as we've seen him uh, do things uh, before. That being said, as a film, it's great. It's a great film. Um, and I'll tell, you, I, I'll tell you why I don't think it's a great Steve McQueen film. Because there are things in this movie that he just touches on, but doesn't do deep dives in, which is not normally his style. He normally goes in on like some pretty serious topics. There's issues with police shootings. Um, issues of domestic violence, things like that. And he just never touches on them more than just kind of tapping on the edge of it. And it's just like just enough to get the story moving along. But he's like, I got bigger work to do. I've got to set up this whole thing. So that's where it kind of didn't feel like a, a Steve McQueen film to me. Uh, again, that doesn't make it not a great film or a very, very good film, but it just didn't feel like his work. So it was just it was kind of strange. So the premise of this is you've got these couple of guys who are really famous or, or really infamous bank robbers, uh, a team led by Liam Neeson's character, Harry. Um, they in the beginning of the movie, they're they're robbing some people. They're, they're doing some sort of heist and they all get killed. And immediately after that, as Veronica, played by Viola Davis, is, is uh, Liam Neeson's wife, um, she is she's aware of what he did. So that's not a shock to her. But she she gets confronted by Brian Tyree Henry's character, um, Jamal Manning, who is running for alderman of the south side of Chicago. And what he's trying to do, like he's trying to intimidate her because Harry stole two million dollars from him. Like he's actually kind of a bad guy. Right. He's. You know, he's sort of a part of the Chicago underworld. And so he wanted that $2 million to finance his political run for alderman, uh, which was just an excuse to just get kickbacks from from people in the job. Right. So he's not trying to turn over a new leaf. He's a bad dude. And between Brian Tyree Henry and his brother, played by Daniel Kaluuya, they are ju they just show up intimidating people like, look, you need to you need to get this money to me in a month. And just making people's lives generally miserable. So Viola Davis's character 
gets together with the other wives of the other people on the team who she's never met and convinces them to take on the next job that Harry had planned out with his team, which was obviously their husbands. And they were going to use that to score, do that robbery and score that $2 million so they could pay Brian Tyree Henry's character. Um, so they would, you know, walk away scot-free. Um, the, th- Again, it's a good plot. I like a good heist movie. It's it works in that Viola Davis goes from this this woman who seem seemingly is like pretty helpless to kind of you know growing into this kind of badass role, which was was kind of dope to watch. There's a couple twists and turns that I that I that I thought were pretty admirable. Um, but all in all, again, the thing that was real sticking point for me is I was going in thinking. This was going to be the Steve McQueen that we've seen, which is like, OK, he's going to do this this heist movie, but it's going to really mean something. And it's going to have this heavy weight to it. It didn't. It didn't have any heavy weight to it at all, um, which is which is unfortunate because I think he's again, I think he is a tremendous actor or excuse me, director. Um, Viola Davis is great in the movie. Michelle Rodriguez is very good. Um, uh Colin Farrell, who plays a the son of an incumbent alderman who's also running for the same seat, and he's kind of just a corrupt politician. Um, he's very good. I actually liked him. He he did a pretty good job. Um, his father is played by Robert Duvall, who who has a a small but pretty important role in the movie. When I thought he was he was pretty great. Uh, again. Uh, Elizabeth Debicki, who is one of the wives, she's she's really good. She's she's a she, she was married to um, a guy who was abusive to her, and so now she's trying to make her way and like kind of find herself in being you know being rid of him, but like also loving him and missing him and everything else. So her trying to find who she is is kind of is is the big part of her story, and that's a very that's a very good one. Michelle Rodriguez is is more trying to find independence because she, while she was taking care of a lot of stuff for her late husband, she was also dependent on him for money and everything else. So it, you know, it sort of plays that role. Um, Viola Davis carries the film. She, she is, she's the lead and she's the lead for good reason. You know, I would have, again, I would have loved to see Viola Davis in a Steve McQueen film that really was a deep dive because I think she can bring it. I mean, we saw that in Fences. She's a tremendous actress, but it just never felt like the material was very deep. And that, that to me, I, I was just shocked by that. I, I really was. So Widows, um, I'll give it two scores. As a Steve McQueen movie, it's a two and a half. As a regular movie, it's a four, four and a half. It's damn good. It really is. It just did not have that essence of a Steve McQueen movie that I was looking for. So I guess if I have to give an overall score, I'd probably give it a three and a half. So three and a half for Widows, three and a half out of five, by the way, not out of 10. Um, So that's my score for Widows, and we will see you guys next time. You're watching the Nerdpocalypse YouTube channel. Make sure you click that button to subscribe and check out our weekly podcast where we talk about movie, TV, news, tech, and weird stories from around the internet.